Hello everyone and welcome back to Games Night. I'm here with Shin, Tom and Ben Hello. in a little stolen moment, stolen away to do what we really want to do all day, which is paint little toys. Play with yeah. little little toy fellas. We got a we got a we got a nice cam. Uh, you can see the here's some sort of Shin's little models. So this is the first video in what is gonna be our Warhammer gaming series of tabletop model gaming. Okay? Um, basically what the plan is <laughs> is to play games with together. Yeah. With little we're gonna, friends. We're going to build a paint <laughs> with models little friends. and then <laughs> play tabletop war games with those models. I feel like I just broke uh, the chair while you were saying that. Uh, um, or in other words, we're going to play Warhammer 40,000. We've rigged up this little temporary setup uh, just to sort of talk a little bit about what we're going to plan on doing and just have a little chat about painting. So I don't even know what, what this is, but I felt like we needed to give you some introduction to what's happening. Yeah, um, rather just diving straight into a game, which will be nonsense for most people. So back in the day, right, when I was 12 years old, a young, strapping young boy. Young Master Brindley. Was that before or after the Berlin Wall came down? It was, <laughs> well, Napoleon had just uh, finished conquering Europe and um, well, hadn't he, yet gone into Russia, what? But he lost. <gasps> That's not... <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, we haven't got that yet. Oh, what when I was a young 15. boy, <laughs> I dreamed of having a big Warhammer army and a big, and I wanted all these models. And so I asked my parents, can you buy things for me? And they, they drove me into um, town, to the nearest big town. And we went into a games workshop, which was a very scary place full yeah. of nerds. And, you know, the big nerd there shouted at you as you came in. King and of the said, nerds. Hello, you the Warhammer! <laughs> Would you like lots, you know, and try to get, you know, and it's still the same today. It is, they do that. It's, it's yeah. a bit off-putting, actually, because you want to go in and you're a bit embarrassed to be there because you're not a real nerd, right? You, you know, you kind of... <laughs> yeah, not, not a cool, <laughs> not a cool guy like you. <laughs> oh. um, and then you walk through the door and it's like, Hello, you! Now, I don't know, like... Yeah, I, they're so, pretty full-on sometimes. Yeah, they? and of course back then, you know, these things were expensive, and, and they still are. They still and, are. And uh, really they're expensive are. toys. Wasn't it like you told me, like, the, the head of Games Workshop said something like, we don't sell to kids, we sell to dads, or something like that. Was, oh, okay. It was one of those, I can't remember the exact phrase. Well, yeah, because to be fair, kids can't afford this. It's yeah, crazy and exactly. And so, so now, well, one of us is a dad, um, at least, <gasps> that we know of. <laughs> yeah. Actually, guys, yeah, I came here. <laughs> this is a, a weird way of me announcing it. <laughs> at the end of this episode, we will reveal which one of you is a father. Oh. Is my father. <laughs> is Lewis's father. Wow. Oh, Have you shit. done, like, the, the parental test thing? <laughs> yeah. What's that called? Like the Jeremy Kyle DNA yeah, yeah. tester. Oh, yeah. man. Do they have one of those on Jeremy Kyle? Yeah. yeah, that's the whole point of that so program. It, it, it's to bait chavs. It yeah, wasn't, but how um, do you bait them better than with paternity tests? Ooh. Yeah, that's true. I, I remember a caption on Jeremy Kyle. It was like this guy and some woman sat next to him. And at the bottom, it says, um, if you can prove she's my sister, I'll stop sleeping with her. Wow. <laughs> oh, nice. See, how else are you going to resolve those kind of disputes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no other way to avoid it. It's so, a service, Jeremy Kyle. A long time ago, I, I played with my friend. We, we bought like a box set, a mm. starter box set of Necromunda for uh, about £40. Is I what I remember Necromunda. paying for it back in the day. Classic which was Necromunda. quite a lot for my 13 year old self, you know, yeah. 40 quid. Yeah. Um, and so we, we, we used to play that, and me and my friend Michael, and we used to argue at the top of the world. I've told this story many times. It was, a, it, was, it, was part, it was a big part of my childhood. But you know, I could, I could never really afford anything a bit a bit bigger and more impressive. And then I went away from Warhammer for a long time. And then I remember playing one of the first Dawn of War games. Oh yeah. And that was the, like my first reintroduction to Warhammer. Mm. And in Dawn of War, they really only relatively well, it felt like Necrons were relatively new in, right. in Warhammer, in Gates Workshop. Yeah. And so Necrons are space space tomb kings. Space like, undead. Space undead, space yeah. skeletons. Slash yeah. the future from Terminator movies. Yeah, they're if you've seen the Terminator. insane robo-skeletons. They're cool. And so they had the big monoliths coming down and the big legions of dudes. So my whole thing <laughs> basically is to have Just a big a legion of, of a big, big wall of dudes. So yeah, like we can put it on the camera here, Shin, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a... Just an endless... 
endless, an endless like marching <laughs> army of, wow. of dudes. So yeah, I've got I've got my my oops, got some dudes, and they're basically um, little skeletons with, and they're they're very easy. These I picked them one because they're cool, and two because they are incredibly easy to yeah. to paint. I Silver. bought I bought them, I glued them, which took 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 the longest time actually, and then I sprayed them black. Um, I sprayed them. What the fuck is this one doing? Well, this is lost his mind, isn't it? He's a. Uh, he's a. He's, <laughs> ah! Shin, he's my. He's what? Well, I don't know why. But he's, he's the one who's different. <laughs> he doesn't quite fit the mold. <laughs> Watch this guy, they'll do a back shot. Look. <laughs> so I cut his mouth open, I don't know if you can see, and he's got like a kind of ape like grin in his. Like, he looks. <laughs> <laughs> like a little ape mouth sort of thing. I don't know if you can see that on, on the camera. Maybe. Oh, maybe oh my god, is he Harambe in the Necron? Out. Reborn. Um, wow. So, yeah, Necrons are my thing. So far, I've really enjoyed painting them because they are literally black. Right? You, you, you dry brush them black. Sorry, you, you, you spray them black or paint them black. Orange for, like, the orange bits and silver for the silver bits. Job done. Uh, we're not using any of these shitty Citadel paints. Look at Shin's Citadel paints here. <laughs> Look at these. They're, they're, they're crap. They leak. They're rubbish. The first thing Tom said to me, because Tom is the expert, okay? Tom, as you know... Don't close your mouth. <laughs> close your mouth while I'm abusing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on brand here. Yeah. Fuck you. We're playing Warhammer, but you know, their paints are shit. Well, the first thing Tom said to me was literally that. Like, don't buy gay paints from Games Workshop because they... Overpriced. They're overpriced. What was it you said? You mentioned it you said that the story he said was that Games Workshop... Do you want to tell the story? I'm not sure which story this is. You, you, you said Games Workshop approached Modelo, Model Colour, to get them to do all of the paints. Uh, Vallejo. Vallejo, uh, which are these ones, yeah, these are the Vallejo ones. Mm. But they wanted Vallejo to put the paints in their pots, yeah. which are notorious for not closing properly, yeah, and drying, drying out. out, and then oh, you have to buy the more paint. Yeah, it's almost like they do it on purpose. Yeah, like designed obsolescence. I, I feel they like it is, because I remember, and I actually have, I did actually buy some of these before you told me not to buy them. Oh. And one of them is completely dried out, and one of them, I accidentally left it a little bit open, but I went to shake it, went to use <gasps> it, oh, and it went shit. everywhere. <laughs> it was That's open. not really the fault of the paint, <laughs> though, is it really? At this point. Well, no, but the thing about these paint boxes is you have to close them. <laughs> no, the game's not like your fault. It is, though. It is. <laughs> it genuinely is, right? These paint boxes, you have to close them at the front, and then you have to sort of close them at the back as well. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the weird thing. You don't, you don't realise until you've sprayed it everywhere. At least once. <laughs> <laughs> is this <laughs> insert your? Is this, yeah, yeah. is this a custom towel paint for the XV88? It's weird. It's, look at it. It's custom. Yeah, they well, Games Workshop renamed XV88. all of their paints. XV88. It's like so a brown. That was, that was the real reason why I stopped using Games Workshop paints because they renamed everything. So everything yeah. had generic names. That used to be Bestial Brown. Oh, Bestial Brown. But you can't copyright Bestial Brown. No. But you can copyright XV88. Rack white TM. It's white. Yeah, everything can be trademarked now, but it didn't used to be. That used to be skull white. So it's now trademark wrap white. But long beard grey, they can copyright that. Why couldn't they copyright skull white? Because too many male other people would use it. Well, yeah, it's just too generic a term, isn't I it? I have a skull. Yeah, so I probably white as well. Low fern. Yeah. Low fern. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, been through a lot there. Low fern blue. Anyway, Necrons. Wait, XV88. That was motherfucking snakebite leather. Oh, you're right. Oh Shit. my god. So, it's been fucking by school. So, I felt like Snakebite Leather could have stayed. Yeah, it's yeah. just an Orc clan, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like they already own that one too. But, but maybe they just wanted to. But now it's just so know. confusing. Like, I know all the old names off the top of my head and I don't know any of the new ones. Yeah. It's confusing. I don't like change. I'm old! I'm old! Things are different now! <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, but I, I still kind of picture, like, look at colours, and I think of them as old Games Workshop paints. Yeah, in fact, whenever Tom and I talk about colours, like, uh, not nothing to do with modelling, but we're like, I don't know, talking about, like, oh, what colour did they paint the new office? Immediately it'll be like, oh, ultramarine blue. Yeah, yeah, it's like really simple, like, oh, that uh, What's green What's the screen, orange carpet out there? Goblin green. green. That's brilliant orange. Is it brilliant mm. orange? Mm. Maybe, maybe blazing orange. Blazing orange. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Different opinion. <laughs> so as you can see, there are some serious Warhammer fans in here. And would you like to, So that's my pedigree, right? My pedigree is could, I wanted to play a bit, couldn't really afford it. But now I'm, I'm doing the, the Dawn of War 1 that I remembered 
Dark which is a swarm the of yeah, Necrons. Yeah. And man, that was a good game. I enjoyed it playing it at the time. I thought Necrons are cool. And I mm-hmm. looked around the office, no one else was playing, and I was like, yeah. fuck it, I'll, I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. Right, who wants to go next? Don't know. I'll go next. What well, about Ben? Yeah, yeah, because he's got some of this shit paint, so. Yeah. What's he doing? He wasn't. <laughs> Why have you got a plate? Are you going to have to have, get a knife and fork out? No, that's my palette. <laughs> okay. And that's my paint, that's my water pot. And then you just put some fucking <laughs> mineral water in. <laughs> Only the finest. Only the finest for my paint. Oh, Maybe that's where we've all been going wrong. Not been mixing mineral water. So Ben, what made you choose Citadel um, paints? I had a lot of them already. <laughs> okay. Before, from before... I learned about Vallejo from many the before years ago. times. Well, they didn't do I do have look, I have this one. This is Vallejo because oh, okay. Vallejo do a really nice range of like more muted, neutral, earthy colours. Whereas Games Workshop paints are all like sort of much more comic booky, bright. They're far colours. generally far brighter. So if you want like a khaki, Games Workshop don't really do a good khaki. A khaki. Do. Why do you want to paint your khakis? Khakis. Nice. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 just, da. Can, you, uh, can we all just laugh and then just cut <laughs> that together? So if you want like a khaki, Games Workshop don't really do a good khaki. A khaki? Do do. Why do you want to paint your khakis? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> Judge me. Oh. But I think yeah. Lewis's um, Games Workshop experience is like a lot of people could probably relate to the I had a few of them because they were too expensive and I spent most of my time arguing about the rules. That is like 90% of... Yeah. Especially... 10, so I couldn't um, paint them for shit. Especially Necromunda. But, oh, God, yeah, my painting was just dog shit mm, as well. Like, yeah. I'm so disappointing as a kid when you see the guys in the shop doing, like, really nice stuff and you're st- you, you spend hours on yours and it just looks god-awful. Like uh, I was super disheartened as yeah, a Yeah, me too, totally. So one of the things that, that Tom sort of... I don't know when we did this, but I remember Tom... What were we painting, Tom, that it was, that was like... I think these were Yost Quest 1 figures. Right. Oh, well, yeah. We actually sat around doing those together. Oh, yeah, yeah. you were going to all do your own characters. Were we, we? Gonna, were we going to do a painting session with you? And we, we actually did, but did it ever get recorded? Did I it don't ever go know out? if we... I think we did. I, feel honestly, like, I honestly can't remember. This was I, so long I feel ago. like we sat down to paint some Yost Quest 1, those Yost Quest 1 figures. You're right. And I remember Tom was going through with me and telling me how to do it and stuff. Sure, it was in a video, but I can't. Maybe it never went out. Maybe it's one of those lost. Your discussion. I need to get a bit lower. Sorry. So when I was doing some of these painting earlier, because it's so repetitive, it was one. It was nice. It was a bit meditation, but I really hurt my back. Actually, you hurt your so back. I'm, I'm yeah, by the end of a painting session, I'm like this sort of weird hunched troll. Like, oh, man. Ah. It's really important. Mm. Huh? Yeah. Up. Sorry. So yeah, that's. You know my little painting painting trick to help oh, avoid yeah. that. Okay, yeah, I do. So like whenever I paint, usually I like to be at this sort of height, but I have to be careful with my microphone. I always paint up on up on my knee because you basically oh. sit upright and you have your hands both have really good points of contact. And so if you're painting like a figure, oh you can be like super duper precise. And not, and not get any shaky hands. You don't get super hunchback. You do sometimes will like go to uh, pick up a paint from the other side of the room and realise that your leg <laughs> is just now super dead and uh. no longer works but I always found like painting like this created very good so you could either have dead leg or dead back there's um, no there, there's well, no, your, there must know, be like, like a middle ground somewhere I generally don't paint with other people around that much because every like little knock or nudge of the table really like uh. really fucks with that strat okay makes sense fucks with your chi You've got to be careful to avoid that kind of thing. So most of mine are done, right? Most of these... Have, so I've got 40 Necron Warriors. Most of them are pretty much there. Um, and they're, they're, they're pretty straightforward. So you... Like, I, like, the, the, like the trick I said, so you spray them black, you dry brush them, which these were techniques that I didn't even know existed, right, when I was a kid. You know, I was, I was of the school of dipping into... A, literally a pot of paint. <laughs> wow, slapping it on any, any, any oh, like smoothing the paint around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the swamp monster space marine technique. But these guys, um, you know, Tom, you know, Tom and Ben were very helpful. They were like, you can actually buy a silver spray now. So I was like, oh, that sounds cool, but I'm actually just going to follow a tutorial I found on YouTube, which was spray and black. So you get you get a paintbrush, a big a paintbrush that's a bit like this one. Sorry, I'm using this the, the, the zoomy in camera. And I'm putting a lot of undue stress on the situation by knocking things around like a, like a, like a cocaine fiend. 
Um, is that what they're known for? <laughs> <laughs> Knocking your paint palette over. <laughs> yeah. And so you just um, you just you just you get it in the silver. You you get all the silver off it, and then you just brush it all over him. And then you ink him, so the ink all goes into the cracks, which is why he's got all of the black bits in the ribs and stuff. And then you just finish off with some some. So I, then I then I paint the, the gun black to like get over any bits of dry brush that I um, got on the gun. Mm-hmm. And then I orange the this bit and this bit. And that's literally all I'm doing. It's like really low level shit painting with no complications at all. Most people, so I've got this big palette right in front mm-hmm. of me. Most people would fill this with paints of different colours. Like Ben's, you know, got like ten different colours there. Mm. Whereas I've got three guys instead <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and three colours. Which do nice. you know what I'm actually. I'm pretty happy with it. It's like a theme. Mm. I didn't want to do the green, so they come with these neon green uh, guns normally. But I've I found this nice fluorescent orange naranja fluo, which I think they use. Um, it looks really good. Look at that. It's like on the on the on the camera, but it's like it's like neon, isn't it? It's. I think they use it to paint little miniature warning signs and road signs in like little railways ah, you know and oh, stuff like this so that's right. what it's normally used for. Wait, model railways yeah like model railway like fluorescent orange signs and stuff um, but yeah so that's that's what I'm doing did you not why did you not want to stick with the um, the green colour scheme oh do those no do those like um, little plastic gun bits do they come green then yeah yeah, but you, yeah. so I got some orange ones and then painted them um, with a thin coat of this, so they still look vaguely like transparent. Because uh, I wanted them, I just basically wanted to be wanted people to know that I'd actually painted my army rather than get like order it online or whatever. Because <laughs> yeah. you can basically get like pre painted stuff that's pretty good these days, like online if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. But there's something satisfying about doing it yourself and like. Yeah, and there's something really nice about knowing that your army is slightly different to yeah. someone else's. I yeah, I think that's the common thing you see as well. Like, that's, that's why there's lots of different color schemes for different like clans of orcs or Eldar or whatever. Yeah, so you get a lot more attached to um, like using them on the battlefield. I find mm. if you've painted them yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, so before um, before I came and worked at the Yogs, that's what I used to do for for money. A bit of extra cash was. Um, Painting, painting toy soldiers. Professional toy soldier painting. Painting other people's toys. Yeah. yeah. So you painted some of mine, actually. Yeah, I did. Did you do oh, that on commission? Do you remember the little... Um, do you remember when they tricked you? No. Oh, this, was what? An, this was an amazing moment, which I think it allowed me to find out something very interesting about Ben. Um, so uh, we used to play this game called Malifaux, and you could like, have a box, and it was like you'd only have like five or six just like very unique and special characters in there. They're all quite, like, different. Mm-hmm. And uh, you asked me to paint some of your Malifaux. Yeah, I had, like, some uh, cowboys. Yeah, yeah. And I'd taken them away and painted them and mm-hmm. was, like, set to, like, give them back to you. But this is when Alex ran the Wargaming store mm-hmm. and someone had brought in to sell that box of Malifaux stuff to him and they were painted absolutely dog shit <laughs> right. and you were like oh do you have my stuff and I was like yeah and I like got my like special model case out and I got the dog shit models out and put them on the table I and, and you picked them up and you were like oh yeah they're really they're really nice <laughs> no uh, I called you out on thanks it, man no at first you were like really really kind and like just like just looked shocked. like your heart had been broken, <laughs> and then just like bad. There you go. That's like the real fucking one. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Oh, fuck. Uh, oh shit! Poor oh, Ben. Totally forgot. That's really funny. Oh my god. That was that's, very very mean. That's a good one. That is a troll worthy. <laughs> <laughs> shit of praise. The stamp of approval. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about my army now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've got. Some dudes. Uh, we all agreed 500 points was about our starting area of how big we were going to go, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. So yeah. Basically, just a story to interrupt you. So yeah, 500 points. The idea is that yeah, if you haven't played Warhammer, each different. There's lots of different units. They come in like a little codex, and there's, there's all each of them has a point value. So when you build your army, this guy, my guys, are worth 12 points each. Okay. If I gave him a slightly better gun, which, or if I had a guy with a slightly better gun, he might be 18 or whatever. So you can customise some of the models to some extent, like give a guy a plasma gun mm-hmm. for an extra eight points or whatever. And so we agreed that what we'd start off with was we'd, we'd try and have a 500-point army to begin with. we do some yeah. battling 
each other, mm -hmm. and then we'd increase that amount every month. So this was Tom's sort of idea, really, that we'd add an extra 250 points every month, and then... Yes, yeah, so it's based on the um, the old school Tale of Four Gamers um, right. format that used to be in White Dwarf. If you ever, yeah, if you ever saw the that, uh, it's nice because it gives everyone a chance to like build their army up slowly. You don't have to paint a hundred models. Yeah, away. yeah. I always loved that feature in White Dwarf because it was just like people in the studio. You know, the guy that works in the post room, the guy who, who's in the accountant or whatever, mm -hmm. and they would show like their armies that they've actually painted. And they weren't kind of like the beautiful heavy metal painting that were used yeah. for like the boxes and the showcasing. It was, yeah. you know, people doing Normal. paintings and conversions and mm. it made it so much more like achievable. Because I used to be like find it quite off-putting seeing like those beautiful models and being like, well, I could never paint like that, so <laughs> yeah. why fucking bother? But when you start to, and this is like before the internet of seeing mm. yeah, things that look nice, sound. but it still wasn't amazing. And like I found that was more inspiring. Like, oh shit, you know. Mm. Humans can do this. It isn't some kind of crazy psychopathic paint bot. He's uh... <laughs> just no life debt. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean about that, though. Yeah, um, definitely feels like that way sometimes. I, I felt that disappointment as well when you, you look at something and you think, "Oh man, I'd, I'd love to have one of these." And then when you do it, you look at it and you're like, "Oh my god, how embarrassing!" Yeah, yeah, like fuck. I'm just it's, ruining these models. It's why a lot of people like to watch us playing games. Really, I mean. We're a little bit shit, and they're like, oh. oh I, I could be like those guys. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I had a brain injury. Well, <laughs> well yeah. Ben, what the fuck? I'm including myself, it's all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah. offensive, right? Yeah. So, so go on, Shin. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, no, yeah. So, so you kind of, you go through your army book, and you work out what guns make up, like, a nice 500 points. But the way we do it as well is um, if, if you want your guy to have a flaming longsword of the executioner, then his model has to have like that flaming longsword, right? That's what he's got. Mm. So people don't do that. And they just say, oh, this model is, it's like, it's a, it's a Barbie doll, but yeah, I'm, I'm playing it as a commissar. So, <laughs> so you oh. put like a little Nazi helmet on her and <laughs> off she goes. But um, yeah, so I've had to, uh, you mentioned that, uh, was it customize um, conversion? Yeah. Converting. You so, mentioned so, converting. So one of the things converting. we wanted to try and encourage on ours was that we said we didn't want to really do any battling until we had the models painted. Because that's another thing like that you see a lot of Warhammer it's, is so much of the time is spent painting and and decorating that you never end up playing a fucking game. And so people just get a bit frustrated and end up playing a lot of games with unpainted models. And as soon as that starts happening. Yeah. You don't need to paint them. Yeah, that's kind of like the death of then, ever painting the army. So, if so, stop so we want to, our rule is that we only want to play with fully painted models. Um, but obviously, that extends to models holding the right guns. And so, when you normally buy these crisis suits, they don't come with these guns, do they, Shin? No, that is a cyclic ion blaster. Okay. But the only the only gun modeled gun that exists in any of the kits is in the commander box. Lol, so that's technical. that black one. It's the black one at the front there. Yeah, this one. So I had to buy some third-party guns from like another website. I got like a, just a little box of plastic guns. It's pretty cheap. Mm. But yeah, and I cut them up and uh, modeled them onto my battle suits. Man, they look great though. They, they look, look really cool. Good. They look scary. But that's why some of them are undercoated and some of them are, are grey, because I just stuck them on afterwards. Uh, so it so kind of works for highlighting, these. which was converted actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's your scheme? My scheme is like a, a brown, brown and where well, it's a brownie brown. Brownie brown. <laughs> brownie brown. <laughs> um, it's, it's a trademark. <laughs> I guess <laughs> brown brown. <laughs> it's a brownie brown and a, and a bluey blue. Okay. So there it is. There's so a drone. You've got a little gun drone there. Yeah, I don't think that's 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 not the Finnish one though because the Finnish one has some dry brush. Finnish? Are you not going for like Polish or um, you know, Scandinavian or? <laughs> 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 and so this stuff might all be staying in, but normally like a video, this would all get cut. You know, the, <laughs> this is the whole the, video of the stuff that gets cut. Yeah, yeah the, this is the point. Seventy-five percent of the jokes, um, you know, they all fall flat, and we just get rid of those. That was good, Tom. I like that. <laughs> it's fine. It's like a cracker joke. You know, everyone can appreciate how shit it is. Well, I'm just warming up because if I turn out to be your dad, I need to, you know, get oh, to the spirit shit. of dad jokes. Yeah, going to announce that lottery soon. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the winner? <laughs> 
<laughs> we can all have a game where there's, you know, everyone's a winner except one person. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, I like that. Brown, brown and blue. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I mean, we, we talked a bit about different types of painting as well. And one thing that we were keen to get into, it's funny you mentioned Vallejo, Vallejo paints. Vallejo, yeah. Because uh, they have a lot of airbrush paints as well. They've got like, uh, a, quite yeah. a good range of airbrush paints. And, and we were trying to get a... Get into airbrushing, I suppose. Yeah, well, maybe we'll do a video on that, like next. Mm. So this is this is sort of a bit of a rambling intro. Um, Wait, is this still the intro? Well, I guess I don't know what we're doing now. I, I don't know where this is. The episode. Well, just talking about what we're up to. Yeah. This is like it's reality like the first TV episode of us doing tabletop stuff. Yeah. So I'm I I was always up for doing a game of Necromunda, but then sort of Tom and Ben. So the real the real genesis of this was I was up for doing some. These guys play tabletop games anyway, but I was up for Net Commander, I was like, how can we do it, can we do it? And then you guys were like, well, actually, there's a thing we can do with Warhammer that's better now, which is like um, little gang wars. Is it called like Shadow War Armageddon uh, yeah, or something? Yeah, they just brought out Shadow War Armageddon, we haven't had a chance to play it yet. Yeah, yeah. and so that that's came cool. out, and we were like, oh, let's pre-order that, let's have a go. And then 8th edition of Warhammer came, which is a new rule set, and yeah. then Duncan was building and painting Space Wolf, so we were like, oh, well, Duncan's already into it with the space walls that's that's that means all we need to do is a couple more of us need to paint some things then we could play some of this so that's kind of how it's that's kind of how the thought process evolved yeah and if this does well then we can go back and do necromunda and all those other things yeah if people like this um let us know and we'll we'll do more things where we sit around with things and, and tom could teach us all the secret tricks Tom, Tom knows all these little tricks, and it's, it's revolutionized my life, Tom, actually. Your <laughs> yeah, life. just your whole life. <laughs> well, I love to cheat. Are we still talking and about I don't know what he cheats. <laughs> <laughs> what he Well, I feel like I know, I've know i got no artistic talent whatsoever, shit. Okay, yeah, I've managed to make quite a decent-looking group of guys because they're so... I can't, it's hard to fuck it up mm. when you use, like, these little simple techniques. I don't have to, like... Mm. The other thing I didn't like was squinting away with, like, a tiny brush, like, trying to do all this pinpoint detail. But you don't have to if you just use these like just, cheeky little just techniques. Just try brushing into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you do go, go cross-eyed after a while, don't you? you well, just... I mean, that's the thing. I'm just, I'm, I refuse to do that anymore. <laughs> refuse to get cross-eyed. <laughs> I've had laser eye surgery. I don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to mess that up. That's expensive <sighs> shit. So I'm just, I'm just tidying these boys up, really. And then I can, so I've, what I've bought is I've bought a lot of um, five by two bases for them. Right, oh, so you can rank them up. So I can move them around as nice. if they were like, um, oh, that's a good. Were like little fellas. That's a really good call. Because then I can, because I would have to move them all around quite so individually. And also I quite like the idea that my army will march around in formation. Yeah, like a like the big Necron hordes. And I've got, so I've got the monolith. So maybe we'll show you next time the monolith that I've done. And also maybe we can get Duncan in. He can show up some of the things that yeah. he's done. Yeah, the thing is Duncan's like, so far ahead because he started his army before we did. Yeah, he was yeah. building it for fun. Yeah. So he's already got like 1,500 or 12, 2,000 points already painted. He's super we're all into catch it. Up. I mean, we're just getting paid for this, but he did it for fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, great okay. job, Shia. Uh, so, so, go on, Tom and Ben, we haven't heard from yeah. you yet. Okay, actually. so I've got. Um, Spice Marine! Spice Marine! <laughs> Uh, it's 2017, Ben. <laughs> Is that not a current meme? You, cannot... uh, you can't say that. That's really offensive. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> to do that impression. They prefer to be called um, Adeptus Astartes. Oh, it's an PC term for them now. Oh, no. <laughs> Heresy. Oh, it's the Adeptus Ministrum. <laughs> What do you what the fuck is that? Oh, Space Marines is, oh. A, uh, is now termed as a hate crime. Yeah, fuck me. So, um, these are my dudes. I've only just started painting. So, like, as Lewis said, I picked up this Shadow War Armageddon box set for doing Gang Wars, and it came with some Space Marine scouts in. Oh, so you, you just pulled out, you, you bought the box, but you pulled out the models. Yeah, so it comes with, like, ten Space Marine scouts in there. So, I've started painting them. Uh, they're not, they're not there yet. They're getting there. Um, I'm doing them with Dark Angels, which means they're going to be dark green. Um, they look pretty good. Ben, these guys so years far. ago. I bought an old forty k starter set because I wanted to get back into it. I painted four of them and then just finished. No one else was doing it, so I stopped. So I got these guys, these tactical marines. They're the classic old, old school dark tactical marines. Set. I thought since I've already got some of them painted. So what, you painted those um, years ago, did you? Yeah, I painted these like five years ago or something. Wow, and you just, um, that's, that's nice. So everyone's got like their own little reasons to come back. It's nice that you can can dig out something out of your drawer and, and, and it's ready to go. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's a shame I only did four of them. Got a lot more to do. 
Well, what do you mean? Well, you can't, four's not enough. The shame <laughs> previous <laughs> me didn't spend long doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what we were saying. Previous me, what an asshole. Yeah. And then the thing I'm most excited about, to go with the Scouts, I've got this Scout Land Speeder. Okay. Land Speeder Storm. It's like, um, think of like, you know those uh, Vietnam helicopters? Yeah, it's, it's like that. It's space marine dudes in it. I, it looks yeah. like, do you know what it looks like? It looks like those green army men. Do you know what I mean? Those green rubber plastic army Oh, okay, men. like from Toy Story. Yeah, it looks like those classic guys, because you've painted them green, and that's it. You've sort of, but, but there oh, are yeah. guys in there. And yeah, like, they're hanging you know, out. You've got this guy with like a machine gun hanging out the back door. That'd, That'd be an really easy cool. scene, wouldn't it? So do they, can they disembark, or are they actually part of the crew? It's flat green. Uh, no, no, they're like, basically you get a squad of, of dudes, and then um, they can jump out, you know, like this. Let's get this lined up. So you, you uh-huh. zoom around with them inside, can you make him pretend to jump out? No. Like, <laughs> well, hang on. Maybe if I do like some stop motion. So uh, some role playing. Here we go. Through the power of editing, and then I move my hand away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, boys. Let's move out. Come on, we gotta kill some Oh My God. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, amazing. So I, I love the imagery of just like hanging out the back of this like uh, hovercraft, zipping into battle. I think it's cool. Do you not think Space Marines are a bit vanilla and shit? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. The blue ones are, Shane. Everyone knows that. <laughs> the blue ones. <laughs> Sorry. Like, your army's great. <laughs> Don't you think Tower are just a bit for um, weeby anime? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 my God. So why did you, you, pick, you, <laughs> so why did you pick Tower, Shane? What was the reasoning behind that? Oh, man. You just got to look at these to know, you know, it's no question. It's just like... They're super Gundam. It's like Evangelion, Gundam, every mecha anime fantasy in an army. Mm. Um, also, they're different. I, I kind of had had um, had like interest in them a while ago, but I like, never bothered with it. I've, I've collected Chaos before, who I think are pretty cool. Mm. Um, but oi, he's got a big gun there. He's going <laughs> to shoot them right in the balls. Right in the balls. No, they look cool. They're kind of like a, a fishy race. Yeah, they've got kind of like weird blue fishman faces, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tom, Tom knows Face these. vaginas. I wouldn't go that far. It's true. I suppose, but if they didn't have any teeth. <laughs> They're like murlocs. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they are all that fishy. They're just blue skinned dudes. Yeah, I don't think they're they They definitely look like koi carp blue. If you mix the koi carp with the person. Are they like the so lizard they, men? They didn't have like okay. mustache tendrils. No, they do. Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Mm. Maybe they got mm. added later on. I don't know. Tao is still like sort of. New, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they really are, aren't they? They're, like, <laughs> yeah. they're one of those new races. They weren't when I was a boy. Even though they've probably been around for like 15 years oh, or something. Man. How long have I remember they when been I was a kid, I was super into Warhammer, and Tau didn't exist. Yeah. And it wasn't until like I came back to it years later that they were like, oh, by the way, these are your new favourites, the Tau. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it was like the first time in ages that they'd added like a blanket, just new army. Well, actually, I yeah. guess... Um, it happened super rarely. Uh, mm. They did like Dark Eldar. Like, but that's really just bad Eldar. Just bondage isn't it? Eldar. I mean, that was kind yeah. of Six around before. <laughs> yeah. It felt like that was a little bit around before as well. And it'd always been like in the lore. Well, you had like um, dark elves, and so making dark Eldar no was wasn't like too the most strength. creative strain. Yeah, because it? it was basically convert dark elves yeah. into space and put them in flying boats and like. But bam. The, um, no, the tower like brand new. Like they'd never mentioned them before. They'd yeah, never like hinted at them. Never been a thing. I guess as far as most people are concerned these days, they've always been around. The Just cool us thing, old men. <laughs> the cool thing is, it's like that's the story of of the forty k universe. It's like there's war, and then out of nowhere, an entire new race busts onto the scene. Like the whole Necron thing of just suddenly they all woke up, and it's old shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like such a huge galaxy, the forty k world. Like you can easily slot anything in and just say, like, yeah. no one had found it before. Tom has a Probably theory about. Like, well, it's not a theory. It's like the old school fluff. Yeah. Of like, do you, so. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, because I do like to embellish Warhammer <laughs> fluff to make it fit what Tom's, I would Tom's like it to happen. Head cannon. Um, but no, I'm pretty sure that it was like so. You had like the um, the Imperium. They fly around. They found a planet, and they see that there's these um, blue ape guys that have just discovered fire, like cavemen town. And they're like, oh sweet, this planet's great. We're gonna exterminate us. So it means they come along and they just virus bomb the planet, and um, then they can come back and take over. Yeah. But things move pretty slowly in the Imperium, and there's a lot of red tape and paperwork to get through. Mm-hmm. And, and they were busy. Paperwork. There was like some kind of like big <laughs> yeah. thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, Officer Bureau's there. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, it's like that bit in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah like, exactly. Submit all the right paperwork, we'll get to you in three to four decades. Yeah, that's kind of it. Um, and something happens, the order is just like backlogged somewhere, and about 500 years later they turn up with like the tox bombs, just like, just construction workers just ready to like just launch them onto the planet, and there's now the Tau Empire, and they've colonised like dozens of planets, and that they've like super yeah they've evolved like 10,000 years of technology in like five 500 years yeah like something like that so maybe I may have some of the numbers off but I'm sure that was kind that of sounds a, like that's pretty much the gist of it I forget the details too but um, yeah they just evolved super quickly and they make friends with alien races like really good well they're, they're kind of like the, the covenant <laughs> from Halo like yeah, they have like this ethos of the greater good yeah, yeah. they're like, like grouping America. all the local aliens to like join their to win their club. Yeah. No, the theory I was talking about was the, the one that the Warhammer, the, the universe where Warhammer takes place is a world in Warhammer oh, yeah, 40k. The Warhammer, Warhammer yeah, Warhammer Fantasy is meant to be a planet or like is theorised to be a planet within... Yeah, they never sort of stated it outright but there were so many hints that yeah, the Warhammer Fantasy world was a planet somewhere in the... The Eye of Terror. Uh, yeah. Like really like deep in there that on like the no one goes between there. real space and warp space yeah, which is why it's, it's got like Chaos demons running around on it all the time. Yeah, and there's magic and just shenanigans constantly. And um, mm, I always like that idea. Yeah, yeah, I think it's kind but of I'm, cool. I'm also really glad they never confirmed it and had like a space marine turn up. Well, like, that would have sucked. I still think that Sigma was a space marine. <laughs> Although, doesn't someone like didn't it get proven recently that he couldn't have been? Um, yeah, unfortunately, because there were two like so. With the space when the space marines were created, there was twenty Primarchs, like the original guy from which the rest of the chapter is founded. But two of them were like deleted from history. So for a long time, there was the theory that one of those guys who was deleted from history was just lost, and he was Sigma, and he turned up in the Warhammer world and yeah, saved the humans. He crash landed in his twin-tailed comet, mm. which everyone's like, "Well, it's a fucking drop pod or a spaceship <laughs> yeah. type thing." Like and capsule. He was like a dude that single-handedly, like defeated an orc army. And yeah, stuff. yeah. But no, now the now they've gone back and started like fleshing out the. A past of 40k a bit more they've they've talked about those two yeah. unknown primarchs and well, I guess they can now just like... make money from them and... <laughs> yeah exactly uh, so no more imagination for you Tom. oh well I thought that there's was a money cool, to be made a cool sort of vibe yeah I was into that there's a lot of cool like little stories in Warhammer yeah oh, the whole so emperor many. and stuff is really cool and like yeah like that is one thing that's been done fairly well although some of it is a little bit just <coughs> isn't it there's a lot of like like the lizard men, all of the, the names of them are all sort of a bit kind of... <laughs> yeah, they're all like itsy-bitsy. Uh, tic-tac-toe. Yeah. Tic-tac-toe, <laughs> He's uh, one, of, one of my favourites. They're all a bit silly. And I, th- I think sometimes oh, they... Oh, re- Silly Billy was... Oh, um, he was a sort of star player, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, the uh, Blood Bowl character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're all spelt in like um, yeah. sort of South American... Yeah, like, like uh, Inca. Uh, Incan type Yeah, spelling. like piss takey stuff. <laughs> Fucking Silly Billy. I mean, it is a little yeah. bit... <laughs> So well, well, you say so, so, say tongue in cheek, but I think that honestly, like sometimes they write this stuff and then they regret it later when they then they become a lot more successful than they'd intended to be. <laughs> yeah, a little bit like pandas in WoW, you know, like pandas were originally the April Fool, weren't they? Oh, race? Yeah, and then eventually, yeah. like everyone loved them so much, they would go, oh, "Fuck, all right, we better actually put them in." He's not racist. He's <laughs> panda. Yeah. More like Shadow Visitor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to throw it down. Just kidding. Just, Thank just, you. I'm, just putting, <laughs> I'm just putting pressures. So uh, what are you playing, Tom? Go on, let's have a quick rundown of what you're up to. Um, so it starts out, me, me and Ben were debating for ages, like, which, which armies we should do. Yeah, because we were both kind of interested in doing Gene Steeler Cult. Yeah, like, um, well, it was kind of like doing Chaos, Gene Steeler Cult. Both of us liked the Imperial Knight, because it's been... We played so much of it before when we were younger, and now there's like lots of new toys that are cool that we didn't have around back then, and we're like, oh shit, like there's a lot of stuff that we could do now, like revisit old favorites, do a new thing, and we had like a lot of overlap in the things that we yeah, liked. Yeah, we both basically um, both wanted to do the same three things. And... Just like super couldn't decide between them, but in the end, up... none of us, none of us got to do the things we wanted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so neither of you are doing gene stealer cults at all now. Yeah. So uh, they're up for grabs, are they? Yeah, yeah. So if someone's doing gene stealer cult, well, we well, I still really, got them. But we didn't can, really like... say we didn't really put any hard and fast rules about not doing the same army. No, but it's not always nice, isn't it, to, to yeah. have your own thing? Yeah, I think it's generally like a better thing to do to have different armies because they're so like 
varied and diverse that kind of like mixing it up a lot is um, like a good way to do it. So who are you playing now then? So now, well, I can still bring the Gene Stealer cultists into it. Oh. So I started making a Gene Stealer cult army, built all my Gene Stealer cultists, and then suddenly realized, oh fuck, I'm building like, I have to build 50, 60 models at least, and I don't really want to sit and paint that many fucking guys. <laughs> um, Unless they're simple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they are, they are really detailed, quite like, complicated models. Intricate. Um, but you're the second best painter in Bristol. Well... Where did you hear this shit? Isn't this a famous tale? Tell us a tale! A famous tale. Um, no, I used to think I was pretty good at painting, oh. but um, there was Aiden, oh, yeah. who literally went to work for Games Workshop he to is paint now heavy, heavy metal. He, he paints the models on the boxes now. And, Holy um, shit. Every time I was like, man, I feel like I'm pretty good at painting. I'd see his and just be like, oh, <laughs> oh fuck, he's so much better. He was your Gary Oak. He was my Gary Oak. <laughs> but if Gary Oak always won, um, yeah. then, oh, fuck. yeah. So he was your Ash, your Gary Oak. I'm, I was, <laughs> I don't think he even fucking, um, I don't think he even like registered. You, never, I, I, you weren't even on his radar. He just didn't give a shit. You never oh, pulled man. up to Aiden in like your Ferrari. With, yeah, like, Aiden. Fifty girls. <laughs> and they showed all of my like uh, golden demon trophies <laughs> in a little case. What what army are you playing? Because it's not Gene Stealer Cult. So now it's kind of like more of like an Imperial Guard army. Because I was like building Gene Stealer Cult, and I was like, oh, I want to have um, uh, tanks in it. Because, because they can steal Imperial units, can't they? Yeah, they can take like Imperial units, you can run Imperial tanks. And I was like, I just want to build some tanks because um, I generally always used to play horde armies. I was really into playing like big hordes. And as a kid, could never really afford to buy like tanks or things like that. They were always like just too big an investment in one go. Yeah. And now I'm just like, well, I've got more disposable cash. Sadly, I don't have the same amount of time I did when I was a kid, but I just want to build tanks. I realized, like, man, I have to jump through a lot of hoops to make, like, a Gene Stealer cult army with lots of tanks. Whereas instead, I could just do a pure Imperial Guard tank well, army. Well, they can get, like, squads of tanks, can't they? Yeah, so you can take tank characters. So they can be your, your HQ could be a tank. Then you have tanks with him and then different kinds of tanks. I was just like, bam, if I can do something where I don't have any foot troops, it's all just tanks. That sounds amazing. Yeah, so, that's pretty cool. Um, drive, your, drive your tank into the camera. Boop, boop. I have a tank. Honk, honk. <laughs> ah, get out of the way. Uh, so this is like a tank. Um, so it's just like a... The... It's got a gold chain on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Pink master tank. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to do, um, basically make sort of like tank aces. Like uh, really kind of, you know, veteran tank company, super theme up all the tanks, make them like quite like different looking to each other. Mm -hmm. But like load them up with loads of stowage. So kind of like, you just wanted to do Kelly's heroes, right? I basically wanted to make <laughs> Kelly's heroes. So you've got kind of like bits from hundreds of different sort of places. Uh, like I've got like a big bits box at home, just filled with just random crap. And so I've just like added like just tons and tons of boxes and stuff onto the back of them, just to make them. Because if you've only got literally like three models on the table, you yeah. kind of want those three models to be cool <laughs> yeah. and like kind of characterful. Wow, so you've had, what, how much customization have you actually done then? Quite a bit. But all um, that stuff on the back, like fuel tanks and boxes and... Yeah, it looks cool. That looks really cool. It does um, look cool. Is that all removable? You've got to give it a spray first? And no, 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 I'm just going like, to blast the whole thing. Oh, really? Um, and I mean, then, they already look like kind of like the right colour anyway, kind of thing. You know, I just want to have like loads of chains and stuff on there. Um, some shoot the camera. Inspiration after shooting the Magic the Gathering promo video. Yes, all the gold <laughs> chains. I love these chains. <laughs> I noticed those didn't go back to the prop room afterwards. <laughs> uh, no, I think they went to the bin. Because <laughs> yeah, um, well, that was just before we moved and we had the purge. <laughs> yeah. and it was a they great all, purge. All disappeared. Well, a lot of it went on eBay. That's um, true. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, I think maybe the chains, the chains went into like the next level of eBay stuff. Did it go I'm into sure. like um, a random mystery box of crap? Oh, maybe. maybe. We do have a few mystery boxes. Probably the yeah. best way to get rid of those tra chains. Yeah. Um, some lucky fella. Got some chains. I was like, what are these from? I don't know. Uh, so yeah. yeah you got like, those chains out there. You know, shout out to you. And if you yes. haven't seen it, go watch. It's a good oh, video. gathering it's, video. It's worth a watch. Nice, nice plug. Yeah. It's, I just think it's one of the funniest things we've done in 
history. Quite a long time. What did you find? Well, well, I think Tom's gang le- mem- leader was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I think your little boy. My little, my little boy. That was so weird. It though. was. It was really weird, but it, it was, was so weird. good. It was weird, um, and I loved it. I'm fine. You nailed it. Oh, I'll get a room going. Thank you, fun. man. <laughs> well, we will share. You're great. No, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> but I think mean, you're great. <laughs> I really like the bit that Shin wasn't in. Um, <laughs> those, those were like the funniest parts. I think yeah. that's why it really worked. Um, yeah, I think so. Good. It's good. Made it so much funnier. So but Duncan, that little teaser is um, Duncan's modelled himself as the general of his army. Oh, I like that. I think it's cool. <laughs> it's, so yeah, let's, let's before we go, let's have a little. So we got we got Duncan's going to be involved. He's going to play his space wolves. Space wolves. So we'll bring him in and we'll, we'll do a little chat with him as well. We got. Harry and Mike in the office, and uh, Mark Hunes as well. So Harry's yeah, yeah. doing. Um, Harry's doing Imperial Guard as well, but he's doing like an infantry. He's doing like, he's a, like an airborne different. infantry, like paratroopers in planes and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So he's got like a bit of a Vietnam vibe as well, with like the Valkyries guys bailing out of those, and loads and loads of infantry. So Humes is doing a similar thing with Tau. He's doing sort of more infantry Tau, whereas Shin's only sort of mechs, aren't you? You're Pure like, battle suit. You're like yeah. Gun the, the, the canon is that his army is a rogue unit of Tau, and my unit has been dispatched to um, destroy. <laughs> so can destroy. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, shit. Uh, what is it? Commander Farsight. Yeah. Is that, That's that what literally Mark's doing. is. Um, He's doing the Farsight Enclave. The oh, cool. Jara Renegade Force of Tau. Oh, yeah. Well, that's him. The yes. combat. combat <laughs> army. You're, you're bringing the justice. You're the, yeah. you're the police. I'm going to gun him down. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we're going to arrive. Oh, wow. The space police. It's your new series. Dull police. <laughs> so Mark's got, uh, Mike, Mike's got um, Tyranids. Yeah, he's doing a yeah. Tyranid army. Like the Zergi space monsters. Yeah, they're pretty pretty spooktastic. And I think that that's it. it might well, be, um, might be Smith else. and Trot might be joining us. They might, yeah. they might do a little guest appearance. Smith's yeah. got some orcs. Yeah. Trot's got the Skatari. Oh, they're the um, cyborg humans. Like Adeptus Mechanus. They, they like yeah. chopping their own legs off and putting them, putting robot ones on. Yeah, like yeah. Robocop. Yeah, like Robocop. Yeah. But as if, but if Robocop just chose to do it, woke up one morning and went, "I don't like my arms," rather than get them all shot off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah these arms, they're not good enough. I need robot ones. <laughs> it's the way we're going, right? I mean, like you're your lips or your your tits. Next up, arms. Yeah, both of those done. Did your lips and tits done? <laughs> yeah, they replaced them with robotic ones. <laughs> <laughs> with pneumatic <laughs> Yeah, well, no, the, it's a pneumatic sucking action. Um, oh. Like, really, really good. Right. Interesting. You have to show Tell me more camera. afterwards. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, well, this, this is enough. This is enough to be getting on with. We'll be back with more of these, I think, as we, as we progress towards getting some 500 points. Then... When, when the first two people get their armies painted, we might actually play a battle, but I don't feel like this is that actually, that actually different from what Warhammer is. I think Warhammer is like 25% spending money, it's about 25% gluing, it's about 40% painting, and then... 10% arguing about the rules. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 5% playing and then 5% arguing. That's Warhammer. So uh, for every nine videos of painting and gluing and going to the shop and stuff, we should do one on... Um, on playing a game. On playing the game, and it should be very shouty. I think, I think we'll catch up pretty soon, as soon as like the armies are starting to be built. Do any of you actually want to play? Because I... <laughs> You're not surprised. <laughs> Yeah, Shin's not, Shin's, Shin's more, in, well, there you go, we, we, we might never release a video with us playing. That's the thing, we originally said we'd do this like months ago, and people were like really excited, and I started posting pictures, and Doug started posting pictures, and then, I don't know, it's just one of those things, isn't it? It takes time. Well, you can only get the painting done when you have the motivation, you can't like you force doing? yourself to Tom, what are you like doing? That. Tom's got a Stanley knife, and he's fucking... I'm taking the mould lines off of... A things. wooden thing. The no, next plastic. level. You know, um... Mold lines? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's things all over your oh models. God, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going. <laughs> nice. Nice. We'll see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>